Hi guys, um, I hope you've all had a lovely new year and to be honest I can't quite believe it's 2019. Um, what I wanted to talk about in this weekend's video is something that keeps me motivated and that is um, my goals for 2019, how I set them and how I'm going to be approaching them. Obviously with a new year coming round, um, there's kind of a bit of a pressure on everyone to set new year's resolutions but I'm the first one to say you don't need new year's resolutions, just set yourself some goals and you'll be completely fine. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go through my goals for 2019, um, the things that I'm going to be doing to help me reach them um, and just some general tips and tricks I've got for you on setting some goals. So if you want to stay tuned and find out how I set fitness goals, to love life goals, to just generally general bay goals, money goals, everything goals, then keep watching. So I thought I'd um, start off by going through what my main goals are for 2019 and then I'll talk you through a bit of them, um, how to set your own goals and also some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So when I set my own goals I kind of aim for three to four goals that I can focus on that are like linked by themes so fitness, relationships, health, um, business for example so um, I've set myself four goals um, my first goal is in terms of financing so I want to save some money up so I can look at getting my own flat and I also am determined because this year I'm 27 I'm gonna beat my driving test nerves and I'm gonna pass my driving test and I feel like if I'm talking this through on a vlog it's online it's out there it'll be out there in the universe so hopefully I'll get it um, in terms of fitness, my main goal for 2019 is to maintain my 8-10 to 10 figure um, and focus on gaining strength through the mind-muscle connection. So I'm seeing a lot of improvement and a lot of results through focusing more on the mind-muscle connection. Um, so for me, that is something that my main goal is, is to kind of really work on getting my muscles like looking nice and pumped and great and on point. Even though I'm slimmer, I still want to look... Like, I'm trying to embrace more, like, looking muscly um, and curvy. So that is my main focus for this year. Um, in terms of relationships, um, I want to set myself to a better standard. I've st I'm still single. Um, 2018 was a big year for me. Also, I went on Take Me Out. I'm still single. But it did boost my confidence and it's kind of helped me get out there a bit more. And I've had a few dates last year. Um, so my main goals is to love myself and have more confidence in myself. And seek relationships based on this. So I always tend to find that I'm really hard on myself. Whenever like dating doesn't work out or doesn't go past like a first or second date. I take it personally and I've always like doubt myself and think there's something wrong about me. So I want to kind of twist it now. And I'm determined to kind of look for a relationship that is for me as well like I'm, I'm gonna try and be a bit more selfish and my final goal of 2019 is to grow my Instagram and YouTube um, I hit my target to reach 4,000 followers by the end of last year so I'm gonna be a bit be a bit risky and I'm gonna set myself a target to reach 10,000 uh, Instagram followers and 200 YouTube subscribers. YouTube is really hard, obviously I appreciate if you watch my videos. Um, there's something that I really enjoy um, because I also love the whole thing of making my own videos and editing and I, I really enjoy having that outlet to make content. So there'll obviously be more of that on the way. So what I wanted to go through with you is the six main things that I find help me when it comes to setting goals um, and obviously the goals that I've set myself for 2019 are some of my like four main goals um, but like there's this like I feel like there's so much pressure on everyone to have and hit certain milestones in their life when really we should just kind of you know keep challenging ourselves set ourselves targets but don't put unrealistic pressure on yourself so um, the first thing was obviously as I've gone through with you is that when I set my own goals Sorry my camera's moved a little bit. I'm going to have to do I jig back? Yeah, hopefully I don't look too frumpy in the camera. Actually I feel more comfortable sat like this um, So one of my main things is to pick three to four long-term targets um, Try and like be adventurous and push yourself and set things that you think you're not actually 
gonna achieve, which doesn't help, you've obviously got to be in the mindset of you are gonna achieve it. But I set myself three to four long-term targets, and as I said at the beginning of the video, um, I set myself like targets based on different things. So health, fitness, relationships, finance, career, um, so that I'm not kind of just focusing on one element and I'm kind of looking at an overall development of myself. I think my biggest tip, um, before you even look at how you're going to get the, the goals is focusing on any kind of challenges or any kind of root cause of why you may not have done something previously so look at what I call any barriers so um, I thought I'll give you an example so um, some people know this about me but um, I studied German um, I I've got A level, so I got three B's at A level. I've actually got four A levels because I took French a year early. Didn't do that well at it, but still, hey, you know, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a nerdy girl. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, I did German, um, and I basically found that it wasn't for me. I felt that I wanted to have more like everyday working skills that would help other people and kind of give back. So I dropped out of uni um, after two years. If you drop out, so because I was doing German, um, German is a four year course because with modern languages you have a year abroad. Um, I dropped out and I had a diploma of higher education. I then started working in insurance. I still work in insurance now, um, but I started basically from the bottom. So I started on the phones in the call center. I have so much respect for people that have worked in call centers or in retail, just because you'll know like it's quite quick paced and you've got to be on it and upbeat all the time. So I then worked my way up to a deputy manager, but then I found out that I was getting made redundant, um, turned it into a positive and kind of used that as a way to look at how to improve myself and develop and grow. Um, and at that point, about a year previously, I decided that I wanted to start studying again with the Open Uni. Um, so I have now got my degree. Um, I graduated with a 2-1 from the Open University. And how I did that was I kind of looked within myself and I looked at the things that might you know hold me back so one thing is finance like obviously because I dropped out I thought that I wasn't going to be entitled to fund it anymore um I had a lot of people in my life that used to doubt me and I was bullied growing up and you have a lot of um people that try and you know they take their own insecurities out on you so I really doubted myself I thought that I was stupid um I was really like I, I mean I'm not perfect now like I still have anxiety and I'm slightly underconfident but I've got way more confidence in myself now than I did back then um I also you know a lot of people around me didn't have a positive opinion about bettering yourself and getting a degree um so that held me back and I also was a bit worried you know I'd taken Think it would have been about four years without any education like any higher education so i was slightly worried that like my writing style and how i was going to talk and you know write and just study and was i going to stay motivated um because what i decided to do was i would work um part-time so i worked between 20 to 24 hours a week every other saturday um as a deputy and then i was also worried um that i wouldn't have the time to fit my studies in so I looked at those things and by looking at those challenges and barriers in advance it kind of means that you've got yourself in the mindset of wanting to do something. Um, so for me um, I did some research and I found out that if I was finishing my degree and not starting from the beginning I wouldn't have to um, pay it up front. I could pay through a student loan. Um, in the UK we have student loans by the way. Um, so I ended up and another thing for me was I just wasn't interested in studying just German on its own, which is what I was doing before at uni. Um, so I then found that with Open Uni, I could do an open degree, which is basically where you can do a credit transfer. So not only had I found a way to study again without it, you know, financially being an impact, but then also I found a degree that would suit me and that I could tailor to what I wanted to study. Um, lack of knowledge, so um, I decided to go for topics that would interest me, so I really love um, 20th century history, so in my first year I did European history from World War One to present, which was great because I'm really into my history, I love it, I, lo I know a lot of stuff on it so I'm really passionate about it, and then because I work in insurance and I also wanted to find a new job, 
Um, I uh, did a, a module in my last year called Crime and Justice, which is basically criminology, um, which has really helped me in general um, because I now work for a legal services company. So it kind of helps me to have a bit of a, a wider understanding of crime, um, just, just in general, like the kind of laws in different countries and how they work. In terms of finding time as well, um, Open Uni is great because you can study online. I would download all of the course textbooks onto my Kindle, so when I was travelling, when I was on my holiday, I could read them. Um, my revision notes, I ended up recording um, so I could listen to them, so if I was going for a run or if I was on the way to work, I could just basically listen to me reading out my revision notes. So there, there is ways around things. So when you are setting yourself goals, don't be afraid to look at the things that might put you off to begin with. My next tip, number three, is to um, find visual reminders. So one thing a lot of people sometimes ask me about, they don't always, but on my phone, um, I'm just going to see if I can clear my little notifications, but I don't know if you can see it, but I've got, um, on my phone, I've got a vision board. Um, I get my like pictures from Pinterest, so I find things that I'm aiming for and that I want to get. Um, and I basically make a background on my phone. I'm just going to see if it's going to focus. So basically, it keeps going off as it's loading. But I have a couple of pictures on there related to fitness, career, holidays, relationship. And that prompts me every day to stay focused on my goals. Um, I also um, use my Instagram. So if you follow my Instagram, the link will be below. Um, I post on there daily and I use that as a kind of way to hold myself accountable so that I know that I am going to be posting pictures of me like posing where I know I need to look good. Um, I am going to be aiming to post daily of what workouts I'm doing, what food I'm eating and it's kind of that way of holding yourself accountable that, that really helps me. Tip number four um, is something called the SMART method. So I've got obviously my main four goals um, and the SMART method is... Basically, if you Google it, if you go on Pinterest, you'll find templates and ways to help you. But SMART basically stands for S is specific, M is measurable, A is attainable, R is realistic, and T is timely. And what it basically does, um, I learned this when I was in the call centre when you had to basically meet like performance targets. But when you've got your wider goals, um, you can then kind of ask yourself prompts using the SMART method. Um, so for the SMART method, for me... If I was picking, for example, grow my um, Instagram, grow my Instagram presence, I would look at and I'd use the SMART method. So the first one specific, you need to make sure that your goal is as specific as possible. So obviously I'm aiming to hit 10,000 followers by the end of next year. But if I if I was being really realistic with myself, unless I have some massive like success, I might not. It might not grow as quick for me. So. Um, I think for me, I'll set them as, as kind of midpoint targets. So I'll aim to grow my Instagram by about 1,000 to 3,000 followers every four months. Um, measurable is the next point. So that's how you'll reach your goal. So obviously I will know I reach my goal when I hit the 10,000 followers. Um, if it's fitness based, it could be that, you know, you see a difference in progress pictures. Um, you've lost weight, so the scales are obviously like a great way, but I always say don't just rely on the scales. Something I'm trying to do is um, take measurements. So as of tomorrow, I'm gonna to be taking measurements so I can go by like, are my muscles growing? Are they getting a pump on versus, you know, just to challenge myself on the mind muscle connection. The next thing is A is for attainable. So is it achievable? And is it something that you can actually reach? So is it attainable? Um, I think I can, like, obviously I say, like, set yourself, like, go a bit wild, set yourself a bit of a higher target, but I think I can hit 10,000 followers because I've hit 4,000, so I've, I've gained about 4,000 followers because I didn't, I had under a 1,000 when I first started on Instagram, so I've gained several thousand in the last year, so I, I think even, even if I don't hit 10, I'll come pretty close. Um, R is for realistic, so is your goal and time frame realistic, so for example, if you're planning to lose weight, is it realistic to think that you're going to lose millions of stone? Like, 
okay it is possible but you also need to think is it something that i can realistically reach so you're not setting un unrealistic pressure on yourself and t is tied in so do you have a time frame so i've said by the end of next year but obviously you could set quarterly targets you could even do it that every few months you have one different theme target so one target could be fitness one target could be career and you kind of work through the year doing them my final tip um well actually now tip number five is start with small steps so as i've talked through my um my sort of targets for social media and growing an online presence um i'm going to be setting myself quarterly targets so every three months i'm going to be aiming to grow my page um and i'm also always looking to kind of find ways to think how can i reach my target so starting with small steps is like you know learning to ride a bike you're not just going to suddenly get on a bike and be able to ride straight away if you are i'm really impressed um but for me i i always try and find little things that can help me so i'll read self-improvement books if you if you watch my instagram stories you'll know that i spend about 30 to 45 minutes minimum a week reading some kind of self-improvement if i feel like for example with my love life and learning to love myself i feel like i need to improve that I'll look out and I'll seek help with fitness again like there's so many resources online on YouTube Instagram that you know you can find resources and you can look online and find ways to get them and my final thing number six is don't put too much pressure on yourself um obviously targets and goals are good they keep you on track and they keep you motivated but most importantly it's so important to be grateful for what you have um i've been really hard on myself a lot recently and in the past that I'm, 20, I'm 27 this year and I'm not where I want to be. Like I thought I would be settled down by now, but I'm not. But rather than dwell on that and be upset, I'm more trying to look at making plans for myself, making goals for myself and being positive and happy about where I am now versus comparing myself. So be grateful for what you've got and just see goals as things that can keep you on track and stay motivated. Um, so that was me briefly talking through my goals for 2019. Hopefully like this has got you motivated and you've enjoyed listening listening to some of my tips let me know in the comments below if you've got any goals set for 2019 please subscribe um, and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and i'll see you all next week bye guys